What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a brand new add-on that helps you add realistic grass to your scenes inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Grass Blade is a brand new add-on that released uh, probably about three days ago. So this is literally brand new from the same guys that brought you the tree and vegetation add-on for Blender that we talked about in the past. It's the one with the really detailed trees and vegetation for your scenes. Well, this is a brand new add-on from them for adding grass, weeds, fields, other things like that. So this is a paid add-on, but it comes with a giant library of different biomes and different grass materials and other things like that that you can bring in to your models. And so a few things about this, I'll probably do a separate more detailed tutorial on exactly how to use this, but for right now I'll give you kind of an overview and then show you real quick kind of how it works. So basically the way that it works is it comes with a bunch of different biomes, right? And you get more biomes if you get the pro version, you get less biomes if you get the other version. But basically all of these biomes are collections of landscape models and landscape assets that allow you to quickly and easily add vegetation to your scenes. All right, so basically the way that this works is you get a menu off to the side and you select a face or an emitter. So in this case, like this plane right here, but then you get all of these different uh, biomes that you can bring in and load. And there's quite the collection of these in here, by the way. So you've got everything from like green grass, like golf course style grass, all the way through like different field setups, other things like that. So for example, there's flowers, there's all sorts of different um, pre-made setups. There's pebbles, um, that sort of thing. But let's say for example that we brought in one of these rocky ground biomes. Well, all you would do is you would just click on the load button right here. It just imports it in and it places it on your surface. So it's just going to bring those objects in and it's just going to place them. And we don't really have to go through and do much of anything at this point in order to get these in here. So you can see how these are loading in. It's taking a little bit because it's bringing in a lot of geometry. Then you can see how once this gets brought in, it's basically render ready. So I can just jump over to render view, for example, and you can see how this is gonna render out really nice. And it renders out even better inside of cycles. Um, so if you were to switch this over to cycles just real quick, you can see how we can get a really great result without having to do a whole bunch of setup in order to get that image ready. And then the cool thing about this is these are all editable. So for example, like each one of these parts and pieces, right, like these small or big rocks, I'm going to jump back over to Eevee um, just so you can kind of see what this is doing. But let's say that we wanted more of these big rocks. Well, you could just go in here, you could just select them, and then you could just up the density. So if I type in four, for example, it's going to adjust where these are. And I can also randomize the location just by clicking on the random seed button right here. So it's got all of this built in to the add-on. And so another thing to note is as your scenes get bigger, and I'm just gonna jump us back over into material preview mode, there's also a quick easy button for proxy mode. So what you can do is you can jump over into proxy mode, which is gonna just load in these low poly proxies so that you can do your other work as well. So you can enable and disable that really quickly. Um, in order to improve your performance. All right, so in addition, if you go into edit mode, you wanna make sure that you subdivide your surface. So I'm just gonna subdivide this a couple more times, just so you've got that geometry in here. Um, this may be a little too many, but we'll do something like this. If you have something like your cut grass selected, you can jump over into vertex painting and you can just set this. You can paint it out so that the object that you have in here doesn't show up in the areas where you do this. So it totally supports a vertex painting, which is really cool um, because it gives you a lot of control. All right, so in addition, you can also select the base objects in here. So for example, if I was to go with my grass dry hard, the stuff right here, um, there's an option down at the bottom to select that asset. And you can go inside of the shader editor with that selected. So if I was to, for example, jump over into the shader editor, notice how there's nodes in here for that grass material. So what that means is that means if I come in and make an adjustment, like for example, there's options in here for autumn or winter. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna affect the way the objects are gonna show up 
inside of your scene. So for the autumn, for example, this is going to become more of like an orange color. There's other things you can select in here as well, um, but what those are going to do is those are going to give you even more control of the way the grass and other objects are created inside of your rendering. So one other thing to be aware of is this is only going to work on Blender 2.93 or higher, and the reason for that is because this whole thing is built on geometry nodes. So for example, if I was to click on one of these objects, you can see how this is actually using geometry nodes in order to randomly place these. So I haven't really dug too far into this, but it would give you more control if you did want to come in here and edit the different nodes. Um, I'm not 100% sure how exactly these are working. I'm recognizing some of the things, like for example, the random scale, um, things like that. Um, those are based on things that we've seen in the past. But just note that this is going to be built on top of geometry nodes and we'll keep moving in that direction. And then something we can talk about a little bit later is if you want more control over this, um, there's also a scatter pack available for Scatter 5. So the scattering add-on, if you have that, then there's gonna be a scatter pack that comes along with that and you can actually use that tool in order to place these, um, in order to place these assets inside of your models. So there's a huge library of different grass models in here. If you scroll down a little bit, there's some notes talking about what's contained in the light and pro versions. Um, so far I'm really liking what this allows me to do. Um, so these guys also had in their vegetation trees and plants probably some of the more probably some of the more render ready and detailed vegetation and plants in here. But if we go back and we take a look at a render created with these assets, you can see how we get a really good result with a minimal amount of setup. So I'm planning on doing a tutorial in the future showing more how this works, but I wanted to give you kind of an overview of the possibilities of the add-on. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.